good evening, everyone. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to episode 104 of New York Red Bulls Discussion Group, the podcast. I'm Gary Redman at your service. Well, today is going to be a very action-packed show because, well, there wasn't much action happening, of course, around the weekend at Red Bull Arena and, of course, at the campus. So we're going to talk all about that for the next hour. We're going to talk about the New York Red Bulls and Chicago Fire, how both teams basically spent the next 90 minutes not scoring, but we lose, we lose a couple of very key personnel. And of course, we're going to talk a little bit about, about how we can get you guys ready for the next game where the Red Bulls will jet all the way across the country and they take on the Los Angeles Football Club out in Hollywood. Of course, we have a very special guest, one of your own, Bob Venta McGillia of the Des- Designated Pundits Podcast, and he has a very special announcement to give to every last one of you. And of course, naturally, we of course we have the match reviews of course, New York Red Bulls 2. They went to a shootout at the campus, and not the bad way you're thinking about, but they went with you know, Chicago Fire 2. And of course, New Jersey, New York Gotham FC, they got their rings, they got their banner, and they played the a game against Kansas City Current. And we'll review that real quick. Plus, of course, all the hot takes, of course, from the live audience. I see you guys all signing in right now. Greetings. Good evening. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Hope you guys have your hot takes ready because I know it's going to be steaming this week for this show. And, of course, our dangerous segment, The Bold Predictions. And a certain guest, of course, um, got knocked back down in last place. We'll talk about that later. Now. If you happen to miss the live show, which is going on right now, you can catch the recording on YouTube, Goals.tv. We're having some issues uploading episodes, but we'll get we'll get up to speed, I promise you. And, of course, Spotify.com. All our episodes are uploaded the next day. And if you have any suggestions, feedback, positive or negative, please email us at rbdgthepodcast at gmail.com. Once again, rbdgthepodcast at gmail.com. So, if you're wondering if there's going to be a horn this episode, no. We, of course, we wound up scoreless. NYCFC, they beat their team, so no horn this week. So, we're just going to have to just sell it. But, however, it's time for me to bring in two of my terrific co hosts, the one and only Lonre, the model, Badmus, and, of course, Mark, Coach Coates. Let's get this out of the way. Um, <laughs> there was a red card. There what? was a terrible injury, okay? Um, mm-hmm. I know everyone's been asking me and just about everybody else um, what was the status for Serge Goma and, of course, Peter Stroud. The, uh, the only answer that I can give everyone right now, we don't know. There will be a club announcement on Wednesday. So right now we're all under the same... Um, you know, under the same status right now, we there's not much. You know, it, uh, even the club doesn't know because both of the players went to go see their respective doctors, and until they get their prognosis and everything done, everybody is going to know about it, and it's either going to be it's going to basically confirm what we're all suspecting that two of our young stalwarts are going to be out for the season, and any way you look at it, guys. That's a bummer, especially for Goma. I was really, you know, the last time I saw Serge Goma, he looked good on that blasted turf, you know, at Belson Stadium. I'm hoping that's not the, you know, costation, the reason why he has got problems with his knees. But as far as Peter Stroud is concerned, we all saw what happened to him, and it did not look good. He was in severe pain. To the point where they brought that poor boy, that poor boy, into tears, as of course they were dragging, you know, as they were not dragging, excuse me, as they were carrying him, you know, across the the home bench, and of course, you know, if it doesn't, you know, what's it say, Lon Ray? If it doesn't rain, it pours. Luckily, it didn't yeah. rain when we played, but no. for you know, which was, yeah, for once, right? We were not bringing scuba gear to Red Bull Arena, um, but. The you know as far as the match is concerned, there's no highlights to speak of other than the double doink <laughs> late in the match, which made everybody want to punch a wall. Lonry, I mean, okay. Before the before a single ball was kicked, we were celebrating the fact that we were first 
in the East. We were rulers of the rules. We knew that wasn't going to last very long. So the result, and I'm going to ask you, should everyone be upset about that, honestly? About the result? Um, yes and no. Why? I'm going I'm I'm to tell you why. Right okay. Why? Okay, so <laughs> yes, because we really should have won that game, especially, you know, if someone named Elias Manuel knew how to finish his chances. We'd be having a very different discussion right now. On the other end, a, a draw being down a man um, for the entirety of the second half, you'll take that any day of the week and run. But given overall, um, it, it's a, it's mixed feelings. You're happy with the score. You're happy with the score that's drawn in the circumstances. But being at home, you know, having several chances to, you know, win the game, take the game with the scruff of the neck and win it, you're disappointed that it doesn't work out. Well, I will say I will agree with you on that aspect. Okay, if you're going to consider yourselves a very good team, you're supposed to beat the team that's below you in the standings, right? So yeah. that didn't happen. I mean, I had a guy who was shouting. He, he you're shouting, you know, um, in the back of me because, as you know, the 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 press box is in front of the fans' high, you know, the seating area. So he saw me. He was like, "Hey, man, I drove all the almost two hours just to watch the team didn't win. That's a loss, bro." Make sure you say that. I'm like, well, yes and no. The only loss that I did see, um, Mark, was <laughs> our, our favorite Colombian defender. Um, <clears throat> um, let's just say that it, it was a comical. Okay. S since when did we start bashing people in the face? <laughs> even, well, even accidentally. All right. I'm not, I, I don't want to defend him because I don't want to. Right, I don't he want to. Obvi well, I don't want to. There's no reason to defend him. That was just a no. you know bone not defend, play. Not the right, not defending right. the indefensible. Right, so no. we completely he bone him. I couldn't defend him. I defend no. pretty much anybody on our team. Listen, like, he he obviously, I mean, from what it looked like and from what I understand, he was sort of you know feeling you know and sort of checking where you know the other opposing player was mm -hmm. and. He just sort of like you know, it, he was thinking he was hitting him like in the chest, I guess, or pushing off around his with his elbow. His elbow caught his head, you know. So you know, again, this is one of those situations where Reyes is we we jokingly call him a red card waiting to happen. Well, it happened. <laughs> it, and happened. it just it's it's unfortunate. I'm sure he didn't mean to do it, all right. But it just it it lends to why. We keep saying it's the maturity level and his discipline level is just not there yet. He seemed like he was doing fairly well uh, coming in for for Ellie because Ellie started the season great, right. had a couple of rough games, had the own goal, and then suddenly now he's the one riding the bench, you know. And and we see Nealis and Reyes now. Sean had a groin injury in in training. And they didn't want yeah, him everyone, starting. No, yeah. everyone was holding their breath, going, "Okay, put him in," and okay, hope he doesn't make it even worse. Yeah. Or oh, by the way, the person who re was on the recipient of that elbow, okay, was uh, Tobias Salquist, and he picked himself up. There was blood and everything else. He was yelling and screaming at the ref. Um, it was a little bit too little, too late to go. Oops, and that's where. Went to the VAR. They had a whisper in his ear saying, okay, you need to take a look at this, and this is how the play happened. You know, referee went over to the screen, so elbow hit, you know, elbow met face, and first it was a yellow card. Then right. rescinded the yellow card, man. then gave him a red. Said, okay, nah, man, that was that was kind of dangerous. You knew what was going on. Sorry, man. Well, he, he knew you. when he got the card. He knew yeah. when he went yeah. he, he knew he was going to be off. The thing that, the thing that I, I will say, the one – I guess high, you know, like I, I guess positive you you take out of that situation when they had to put Nealis in, Dante Van Zier came off and he was visibly upset. Of course, he was we saw it happen. I mean, he, he, was, you know, yeah. he, he threw. He said, "Why do I have to be the sacrifice? Of the, why do I have to be the sacrificial lamb from this num?" Well, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. sure he yeah. didn't say that, but I'm sure he was screaming no. in his ear, you know, in sure. his head, like, "What the hell?" Yeah. There were words and he was that, doing. I mean. The thing that was driving everybody crazy was Van Zier, he was sharpening his knife. He was like, Yeah, let's let's get let's I mean yeah. let's 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 do this party. And just before he was able to do do his dance, he gets yanked. 
Yeah. Okay, that 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 kind of scratched mean, everyone's head. I had chances in the first half. I mean, there were opportunities. We just didn't capitalize, and things were rolling in our favor. We look like the better team, and then that plague takes place, sets the tone for the rest of the game. Now, I know our coach said it. We'll say it during the course of the show. Everybody's happy that being down a man over an entire half, we still walked away with a draw and get a point. Yeah, you're, you you got to take that because what else are you going to say? Are you going to say, oh, you know, it was it was it was bad. It, we 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 could have lost this game. Oh yeah, we could. Hundred percent. Our, our defense stepped up. Our midfielders were playing their butts off, and everybody who was on that field was making sure that they weren't going to score. And of course, you know, listen, it's when you, when you, when we saw the double doink, it was just like, all right. Okay. That, that's this our, this that's was not our day. Wrong. Yeah. That no, was that's, wrong. That's it's, wrong. Yeah. You know, it's wide open. And the worst part is like, you're watching and it's like, who's standing six yards away, wide open. You know, it's like, did anybody pick their heads up and look mm. for, guy no what does manuel do he tries to listen i get it he's trying to score that's his job so he hits the post now look we can be all over him all right two inches to the left it's in we're having a di- right we're having a yeah. different conversation and then we're telling we're, then we were thinking oh maybe he comes off the mill carton it was and he scored you know but it, it didn't happen so what do you do you know i think we just we take it for what it's worth the worst part of this is obviously losing Stroud. Yeah, he's, he's done. He's done so much. He's made so much progress, and it's just it's heartbreaking. And you're, and and you're that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you're set back, and we'll see you next year. I mean, it's yeah. it. it it's, I mean, I I was really feeling for Stroud. I really was. I was like, damn. Now, I mean, I mean, I kept saying to myself, this team is going to be as good as it's going to get as long as they stay healthy, right? Yeah. So you and now lose, <laughs> and now what, right? You lose Stroud, you lose Goma, possibly for the year. Now, keep this in mind, all right? Not Goma, bro. You know not I mean? again. Not again, right? Now, keep not this again. in mind. We don't know. Um, I'm. We're contacting the club. The club is telling us, hey, we will not, we will be, we'll, it, it's going to be definitive Wednesday after they talk to the doctors. Um, it's going to be a question for about Wednesday of finding what's the status of many of these players. But my gut is telling me that it's a, basically a confirmation of what we all dread. Um, we're going to lose two guys, you know, solid guys off the bench. And if I'm Schneider, um, just like uh, Guzman and Schneider, you know, they're on the phone or better yet, they're grabbing some guys off Red Bull too, who are doing quite well, and then bringing them its next man up. If there's one thing about this system that we hold near and dear, it's always a next man up philosophy, and in some cases it works. Okay, if you're training some kids off the Newsom, the only thing that this is the thing that kind of bothers me about playing in MLS Next Pro, it's not stringent enough. Um, you're not bringing these kids up in a rough and tumble against going up against grown men, okay, who are looking for contracts. So ready or not, you're basically bringing these guys as fillers, and that's the end of it. So the good news is, you know, the good news is we didn't lose, right? (laughs) The bad news is we didn't win. (laughs) And because of that, um, Inter-Miami leapfrogged over us to claim you know, the top spot, and then all of a sudden everything is well within the football world. What, was, what were we doing up in first place, right? But it's early. I, I want everybody right. I want everyone to relax a little bit. It's early, right? It's just April. No team has ever won a championship in April. doesn't work that way. So we got a long way to go. The simple fact that we're uh, at the summit, so to speak, and within shouting distance or basically either winning the shield or anything else, we'll see what happens in October. Right now, let's just take it easy. I don't want us to fall. You know, the only expectation we have right now is win the game in front of them, right? And if they finish top three, right, guys? Huzzah! 
Right? We, we never, you know, I mean, the way we, I mean, the only expectation we had was just to win the game in front of them, not just to win, you know, not to win the whole damn thing. But if they do, fine. Okay. But it's not the end of the world. So I don't want people yelling and screaming at us saying, hey, man, it's a loss. We should be being in a fetal position. No, I'm not saying we should be happy. Um, we're still undefeated at home, which was a hell of a lot better than last year when we were surrendering games left and right, right? To the point where, I mean, poor Lon Ray had to break his knuckles, punching his fist through a wall of frustration because we were basically winning games. You know, we were supposed to be winning games and wind up losing. Okay. It was, the, wall, the, wall, the wall still has scars, man. The wall still has scars. <laughs> I mean, it has scars. It, it was I killing never it, it, Oh, man. I mean, you know, picture me. I mean, I got to be a reporter. I'm not supposed to, you know, cheer or boo or whatever the case in the press box, but your frustrations was mine. I was like, okay, what the, I'm getting ready to write a victory. And you guys, yo, what you, are you kidding me? <laughs> You're going to do this in front of the fans? You're going to do this in front of the faithful? What's wrong with y'all? I mean, but that, I can't naturally say all that stuff. So just to recap before we go into the next game, as we all know, Nothing doing. Zero, zero. Okay. New York Red Bulls, zero. Chicago Fire, zero. And when you look at the stats as far as shots on goal and, and everything else, it's not like, right? It was not for a lack of, you know, lack of effort. Okay. 10 shots, five on the target versus 34% possession. The one sting that's going to hurt a lot of people right now, you see where that little digit right next to red cards? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, so, you know, we lose, you know, Mr. Ray's for this match. Some may, may even say it's an improvement. But now we got to go over to the West Coast, Lon Ray, and waiting in the wings is the Falcons of LAFC, who, you know, who, if you take a good look at where they are, don't be fooled. This is a good team, right? But Of course. You know, you look at them when we're in the standings and you go, what the hell are they doing over there? What's going on? It's, they, they don't seem to be the team that, you know, remember when they were bossing people around the BMO? Or, okay, it was Bank of America. Uh, we'll call, not Bank of America, sorry. Um, BMO, Bank of California, BMO. right. Bank of California Field. Now it's called BMO Field. I hate corporations. That's so don't dumb. You? So dumb. So <laughs> dumb. Don't you? Don't so you? Stupid. <laughs> right. All right. So hey, looking at the standings right now. Corporate sponsors? Yeah, and we actually play. And actually, we yeah. just sit in the arena. It's owned by a corporation. Oh, very good. Yeah. Speaking of experience. Yeah. Come on. I mean, yeah. Now, at least they didn't change. At least they didn't change their name every damn year. Okay. <laughs> it was yeah, born Red Bull Arena. Yeah. 14 years later, it's still. Red Bull Arena. So there you go. I don't think no, they're gonna, I mean, they, they floated soon. the idea of corporate nobody, name shit and stuff like that, but nobody stepped up. <laughs> nobody stepped up. No, so Who wants to buy the name for this arena. Nobody. I mean, Red Bull Arena sounds fine to me. <laughs> I mean, come on. All right. So yeah. back to LAFC, sixth place in the West. Okay. Uh, yes. Um. So here's the thing, though. Is it me? Oh, nobody is scared at this team anymore. Nobody's scared no, of them. No, they're not. I'm not, I'm, I'm not scared of them, to be honest with you. Um, Yeah, they still got Denny Bowanga, who's a heavy hitter, three goals yeah. chases on the season. I would love but to we, have him on the squad, but go ahead. He would. He kind of ghosted in the last game against Portland. I have friends who, I have friends, um, who are Tippers fans who were at that match, and they say that, yeah, he completely ghosted that match. But <laughs> yeah. this this young kid, Mateusz Bogus, um, they just got him from, it looks like from Leeds United. He's, he's, he looks like he's a – actually, gone, they had him for a year now, but, you know, he's in the story role now. He looks to be a solid signing for them. But at the same time, you know, now they don't have Carlos Vela anymore. That's such a huge, huge loss. That's, you know, a, that's a huge hole. Forward. Massive are, hole. That's why, their captain. That's their leader. He's been there since that why fucking are, can. Why aren't this – or why isn't this organization reaching out to Carlos? Saying, Ooh. hey, man. I – I wish we I could use, tell you. You know, hey man, we 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 could we could use you unless you and your family have to be on the East Coast, because LAFC ain't in no hurry to get this boy, and they built this they built this franchise around him. I he wasn't just some DP signing; he was the man, the face of the franchise. 
and you six kick years. him to, six years and you kick him to the curb. Now all of you guys went ape when we kicked BWP to the curb. Okay, <laughs> luckily he didn't suit up for another squad, but Vela, and you're not dialing his number, and he's just chilling out there in the in the, in the seats. And I, I saw the game; he's chilling out there, you know, in, in in the seats and whatnot. But you ain't calling his number. I mean, you sent, you know, um, uh, excuse me, you you sent one of your stars to Chicago, who, well, he wasn't really much of a factor, and I can understand why you you know you you Kellen, you know. Um, Kelly you know, Kelly I mean, Gacosta, but he's still a U.S. men's national team player, veteran, senior. They're going to need him. They're going to need him down the road, but you can't get him down. I mean, I kind of understand how LAFC is trying to rebuild their organization because they got a cup, right? They want a cup. So it's all about building stuff right now. Um, Mark, when you look at these two sides right now, we're a little damaged as far as the bench is concerned, but we're still okay in the starting 11. So head to head, I think we I mean, can walk I, out of there with three I points. I, I, it's kind of funny because, you know, LA, LA's in, uh, I, I say LA, LA, I mean, their, their stats aren't terrible. All right. They played to a 2-2 draw against Portland, a man up, because Portland's goalkeeper got red carded, a straight red. Their old then, guy, Crepeau, got yeah, red carded in the 2022. Yeah. How you doing? Ah, yeah. Get out. Well, yeah, he, was, he was out. <laughs> the look on yeah. his face was priceless. Like, was. what? What? He was like, what? Yeah. Like, Whoa. yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Well, what did I do? I didn't murder the kid. <laughs> That look on his face. There was there was no question it was a red. All right, absolutely. And and you know so you know their their newer signing that you know we, we spoke about. You know, travel he, pass. He, yeah, he had both. show your name, man. <laughs> <laughs> Get tired of calling you travel pass, but he's right though. The reason yes. why they're not in a hurry to you know to dial Vela's number, he wants big money. Okay, well, of course he wants big money. Well, yeah, you he know. carried that franchise and got him a chip. Well. Him and you know, you know, you know, him a couple and you know, others, uh, a couple yeah. others. But right. he said, wants that, you know, he wants that money. Pay that man his money. They're not, but they're in no hurry no. to do that. No, last I, mean, I checked. If if they were in ninth place, tenth place, mm -hmm. maybe they reach for the panic button and give him a call. <laughs> but they're in sixth. <laughs> right? now, something, something we didn't even, you know, I mean, we were we were talking about where we're at. Have you looked? At the Eastern standings, there's a lot. I, have. There's a, I mean, I know it's still early, but like everybody's just sort of bunched up. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a traffic jam, which means that Huge. something it's that we talked about, Mark. Season. Yeah, something we talked about, Mark, get as much points as you can because it's going to get stupid past well, May. Yeah. Well, that's why <laughs> that's why this game is so hurt. I mean, have you seen what Philly did with Atlanta? Okay, Atlanta had a two nil lead. Right, they were jogging all the way to home plate. Then Philly said, "Hold my beer," and next thing you know, they tied. Yeah. They tied. Atlanta's wondering how in the world this happened. Everybody over in the you know footy mob is wondering how in the world did this happen. I said, well, we take all your knew. Foot off the gas. Take your foot off the gas for one second. Here come Philly. But this is what we're talking. We haven't even played those boys yet. We ain't played Montreal up in Montreal, a team that we always have issues with. <laughs> Came to giving us fits up there, you know, club foot and the boys. I mean, got past FC Cincinnati, got curb stomped by Cle by uh, by Columbus. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> got curb stomped. Bless you, by the way. Um, <laughs> got, got curb stomped by Columbus. Okay, we ain't faced Philly yet. New England is, I don't even know where New England is. New England is, oh, yeah, they're in, oh, man, they're at the bottom of the table. Good Lord. Remember how you remember how it was fiending, you know, for, you know, uh, <laughs> for, for Caleb Porter to be our coach? Yeah. I'm kind of glad we didn't pick, <laughs> pick him up. I mean, because, but then Song. again, New England didn't really improve. They, they just sat, you know, they just went with the guy, the veterans that they had and didn't even grow. Okay, so. 
no, I think that was one of the things that came out. I, I think we'll uh little little segue to the to the Schruber bashing that's you know oh, coming. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh you yeah. knew where I was going there. All oh, right? yeah. Listen, I I think it, it was it were a couple of places I've seen it said Sandro Schwartz has come in here and he's brought a breath of fresh air, a new attitude, and he's definitely the right guy for this job, as far as we can see. Okay. He has made such such improvement with just the cohesiveness, the communication on this team. And our friend Gerhard Struber got let go <laughs> from Salzburg. <laughs> and he came here. Yeah, didn't take long. He came here. RP Bozo. Yeah. It was it this was the stepping stone to getting the job at Salzburg. That's what he had planned. That's what he had hoped for. So and got it. And you got it. Even if you let go from here, and now you've been let go from Salzburg after less than two seasons, you know, I mean, it just, it, it was just, a full season. Yeah. Well, and, and now they're, and now they, they didn't get the, their national cup, right? They lost that one. This is a team that's won the title 10 straight years. And he can't take the guys that he this, started. Yeah, that that yeah. that team owned the league. Yeah. Okay. Well, so they, they, they were they were the equivalent to Bayern Munich. Okay. Yeah. In that league. They never lose. Okay. No. But if now one if there was one thing was. there was one thing that we could hang well, we I mean Folks here in New York Red Bull really didn't give a damn about those two German teams. Okay, let's be honest. They really don't. But one no, thing you can say, one thing the Red Bull Forsberg can say, Leipzig. yeah, we get, we got, you know, what, you know, I mean, we should be getting more, you know, a little bit more over that. But hey, but that's, or an L this, from you Leipzig. know, but I mean, not from, from Salzburg. Yeah, but yeah, but you see, you see the level of play in the Bundesliga and MLS. I'm sorry, but ML. Say what you want about Major League Soccer, but it ain't no way, in, in, you know, no way no. at the same level as the Bundesliga. No, you're kidding. Okay, no, everyone it's not even oh, a comparison. No, it's not even a comparison. No, no, some of the guys on the bench are better than the stars in Major League Soccer. That's a fact. Okay, well, <laughs> they will run circles okay. around you, dudes. I'm like, no, you know, so we we have a team. Over in Germany, they got teams. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> plural. Okay, yeah. A, B, C, and D. This C and D team will ghost us. That's how good they are. Well, how, you got to think about it. Forsberg was was riding the bench in Leipzig. Okay? Yeah, because they had a younger guy who was coming in and basically taking his job, but they didn't want to get oh, rid of him. The yeah, they didn't want to get rid of him. He he was the yeah. man that got them there. Okay, right. so they treated him with all the gravitas. Which was well deserved. So they went to him and said, "Okay, we don't want to dump you, but. and we don't want to send you to, to yet another German club, which half the fan base would have us strung up by Monday. Oh so how about you take a little trip over to you know yeah. New York? They and need some. Like, they need you know. They. I mean, he was in need, and we talk with the you know, with, we talk with the uh, we, we yeah. talk with the Salzburg. Excuse me, we talk with the Leipzig kids all the time. Lon Ray, Mark." All the time, okay? They love that boy. He's a legend. I'm talking BWP level and above. They yeah. love that boy. So when they, when folks heard that they were shipping him to New York, yeah. they hated it. Oh, yes, they did. They didn't want to lose him. But at the same time, we would get nothing but kudos from the like said people. They said, you're going to like this guy. I'm telling you. You were like, wrong. you know, you were like, and they were not wrong. We love that boy. We love them. Now, he's only got one goal to his name, but <laughs> we love them. He's, he's, <laughs> he's got three assists, though. He's got three assists, though. Okay. So, but he yeah. was the quarterback. You know, one thing that I have to explain to folks, he's not here gonna he's not here to, you know, to dump 20 goals at people. That ain't his, you know, that ain't his style it's his style. His style is to be the quarterback deep in the defense. He's a much better version of Lucinus. He hangs out in the deep in the defense, dishes that pass, and oh my lord, can he pass? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we haven't seen passes like that in the D in a long time. That's why I like that guy. However, he can't win this alone. He's a midfielder, no. not a striker. Something that we desperately need. Now imagine him, you know, 
you know, getting Lewis Morgan back healthy and everything was great. Okay. It was definitely great. Um, we're going to need more. I'm sorry. We're definitely going to need more. And that's the whole thing. You know, when you're, you're playing against, you know, you know, we're going into a, another stretch of big games and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Lon Ray, we got LAFC. They're going across, you know, cross country to play LAFC on Saturday, late night, uh, with, <laughs> it's going to be a late night game for us. And it's going to be a late night oh. game for my man. Um, <laughs> the birthday boy. So we're going to see him soon. Then they're coming back here. Okay. They're coming back here to place new England. They're going to be tired when it's all said and done, but neat, you know, but you know, but yeah. needless to say, this is going to be, you know, a tough stretch for us and to see if we are indeed a good side as we claim we are. But, you know, email was off on Saturday, you know, was off on Saturday. So, and he's working his way into fitness and everything. I like definitely what I, you know, like to see. But there's going to be a time where he's going to get switched on, and then we're going to see the real Emil Forsberg. We ain't seen nothing yet, and that's the beauty thing about it. Now, I'm hoping by the time that happens, give that man one more weapon for us to send it home. Now, I'm not saying that we should, you know, hoping for a championship, but... um the lack of death, Lisa, and I agree, this is where it's going to come into play. This is the biggest thing that I hate about MLS, okay? Every single team they face is top-heavy, except for a few that has a good, sizable bench. You know who's still playing in that, in that, in that, on that CONCACAF, champ, in that CONCACAF championship tournament? Columbus. Why? Because... They're not just top heavy. They got talent in every position from pitch to bench. Something that I've been asking, begging, pleading, okay, this organization to do. Okay. Hopefully they get the message. Ever since they put that statement out, hey, they said it was getting a little tired, but we'll see what happens from there. So, well. LAFC, that's will be kickoff at 1030 on Saturday. That's why Bradley Glick, that's what I'm calling the, the, the game thread, late night with Bradley. <laughs> because that's it's it well, we're gonna be losing some sleep one way or another. It's Saturday night. Um, this is gonna, you know, I agree with everyone. It's gonna hurt our death. But unlike the coach that got fired, okay, for Salzburg, the job for the job that he really won. I mean, I mean Imagine this if you are Struber. You didn't like the job you were in. You wanted the job that you got. You got the job, and then you got kicked. They got tired of you from what we're hearing. They were tired of this guy. They were like, look, you know, the players tuned The players tuned out in New York. The players tuned out in Salzburg. They also balled the Europa League spot. That's a, and that, all they had to yeah, do was not that's lose a by the three one <laughs> in the peak on their last game. Thankfully, they lost. I'm always rooting for that man's downfall. He might as well just retire at this point. He's he's finished. That bozo's finished, man. Well, we ain't got to worry about him because he's 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 you know he's not in, you know he's not in our neighborhood. He's not in our circle. He gone. So yeah. <laughs> that's basically yeah. it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take ourselves a break because standing in the in the virtual green room is the one and only Bob Venta Megillia. Now, if you don't know who he is right now, he's already with the Designated Pundits podcast. Him and his heroes talk all sports about Major League Soccer, not just with the Red Bulls, but he has a very special announcement to, you know, to share with all y'all, and it should be interesting. We'll be back here in 30 seconds. And of course, the gentleman in the lower right ain't looking absolutely resplendent in the USA <laughs> kit is Bob Venter McGillian. Now, remember the last time he was here? He basically just simply dropped a lot of knowledge on every single one of y'all when it came to sports betting. 
It was one of our best shows of the year, by the way. And people were asking us some more questions about it. So we brought Bob back to answer said questions. Among them was this. And I'm going to lead this off, and I'm going to leave you with Lon Ray and Mark. Bob, when it comes to sports betting, we know that it came in like a house of fire. And next thing you know, everyone is in it. Everyone is into the action. Pardon the pun. But now comes the question of this. How does MLS, they're very immersed in it right now, okay? In almost every match you see, you see, you know, points, you know, whether they, if you, want to, you know, whether they want to bet on that team or not. How's it going? And more importantly to that question, how is it going to be beneficial for the league in the long run? It's a lot there. That's the, <laughs> which one do we want to start with first? <laughs> Take your pick. Uh, take your pick. <laughs> so I, I kind of, you know, prepared, you know, a few things about how sports gambling affects the sporting community uh, as a whole. And, and the kind of thing that really stood out when I was taking my notes was that there are negatives, right? But I, I think the positives really, really, truly outweigh the, the, the negatives there. Uh, and I think that it's going to help Major League Soccer grow. I think it's already happening. Um, you know, I do, I do have an announcement, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll start there. Um, I, I was given an offer and I've accepted, um, and tomorrow will be my first podcast with bet us. Um, they're starting a major league soccer ah, channel. And, um, hey, yeah. there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, not something I was looking to get into. Um, they contacted me, they reached out and they said, Hey, you know, we, we've seen your podcast. We really like what you do and we need someone to, uh, start. With major league soccer so i, I have a, a group of three people um i, I have a, another host and, and a co-host and we start tomorrow four o'clock it'll be live on on bet us you can find it on bet us tv so you know that was just a great opportunity great opportunity for me to expo expand my brand i already have you know the number one mls betting podcast in the country and tomorrow i will have the number one and the number two mls betting podcasts <laughs> in the country which is going to be fantastic um we we brought on one of the uh you know premier guys from canadian soccer who's been doing stuff for the canadian league gareth wheeler um he's a huge name up there in montreal yeah. and very and, huge um, with the Canadian national team. And we also brought on Dan Alexander, probably not someone you've heard of before. He's a, a like a sports better and his focus is small uh, sports, um, small market sports. So MLS right now is currently a small market sport c uh, compared to the amount of money coming into premier league bets, NFL, stuff like that. So we are still a small market, uh, which means, you know, less confident betters lines that aren't maybe quite as, uh, set and, and decided as as some other leagues so you know it's gonna be a lot really, really exciting hope you guys can can check that out it's gonna be um an awesome time oh, we got three really really oh, we shall. great guys yeah, <laughs> oh, we shall absolutely you go, so, we will follow uh, so i'm gonna leave this with you with lon ray and mark gentlemen he's all yours <laughs> all right what's up bob how you doing man? Hey, great to see you what's what's up, man? Great, great, yeah great to see you too brother Congratulations on you so you know, moving up, you know, your new podcast, man. That's that's fantastic news. It's actually so moving. Nice. He already has the number one. Now he's moving down to number two as well. He's so cornering the Well, line. I might overtake myself. I kind of have the uh the, the talents to do that. <laughs> oh yeah, he's you know, he's, he's expanding his range, man. He's, he's expanding his range, expanding his palette, all that stuff. And yeah, I know I know how much work you put in, and you know, this is a very, very justly due reward. So congratulations on that. Oh, thank you so much. Of course, man. So my question is, one of my my first question is, you know, sports betting legalized has obviously made such a huge impact, you know, on the four major North American sports leagues of the past year, you know, and obviously the Premier League, La Liga, you know, the big European, big five European sports leagues. Some even say that the betting lines impact refereeing decisions that decide the outcomes of games. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that, you know, some fans are maybe putting the tinfoil hat on a little too tight? Or do you think that... um the uh, concerns are reasonable and valid. Yeah, I think that it is true that fans have their tinfoil hats on a little too tight. There mm. are negatives that come with sports gambling, right? Um, we, we've all heard of the sports uh, fixing. You saw Juventus got in trouble for that a lot. There's actually a documentary called yeah. Bad Sport, which is all based around different sports controversies that have happened throughout the years. Uh, I would I would highly recommend watching at least the Juventus episode there. But there are so Ooh, many good things yeah. that happen too. Look at the NFL. When people are betting 
hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars on these games. They need the most up-to-date information and it regulates itself. For example, the NFL used to have injury designations as questionable, doubtful, probable, right? Now they have yeah. to cut that all to just questionable. And the reason they did that is because people have money coming in. They need to know accurate reports on what's going on. So I just kind of want an example of how the money kind of regulates itself, right? So yeah. there, there are all those negatives, but there's positives too. Um, for example, right now on Friday at 1030, you can get the official MLS injury report when it drops on their website. Friday at 1030 p.m. That's too late. Yeah. Right, that's too late. So <laughs> when Definitely people are betting and the money's coming in and we, we need to be um, accountable, not only to ourselves, not only to guys like me who, who do this on a podcast, it, it needs to be uh, accountable to the government, to other regulating agencies. And that's exactly. where where a lot of this is going. We've already seen it in baseball. We've already seen it in, in NFL football. So I think that that is part of it. Um, these things also, it's going to help jobs. When you're reporting players, uh, injuries, stuff like that, it requires a better infrastructure than we have right now with MLS reporting. Like I make the the joke that you know when we when we go to a post game press conference and, and you know I'm sitting here next next to Gary, look around. How many people are getting paid to be here right now? Two in a room of forty people. Right, that's the problem, and that's going to be fixed by sports betting because you are going to need more accountable people, and it's only a matter of time before like myself, um, these big sports books pick up other people, other podcasters, other reporters who are going to get the information that they actually want. You see that with fantasy football. I mean, years ago, it, you you wouldn't press a coach. Oh, how hurt is this player? How long is he going to be out? Because of the advent of fantasy football gambling, you get better reporting. You have people actually holding the coaches. No, you don't want to answer my question. I'm going to ask you again. Because the people don't want to know like, oh, he's he's great. His wife is visiting him in the hospital. It's all great. No, we want to know what is the the ailment? What is the injury situation? We see that with Red Bull this week. There's a player yeah. who's very obviously very hurt. No, well, Where's we're the not going to find out. Where's the information? Yeah, well, we're told Wednesday is when we're going to get told. You know, so there is, I guess, the um, to sort of go bounce off of what Lonnie was talking about. When, when we see like... Like anytime I've, I'm watching like even non-sporting shows, all the streaming shows that have advertisements, FanDuel has got to be the one of the I see the most. All right, but you, it's just it's become part of our culture now to see sports betting. Um, DraftKings is another one that comes up a lot on on my kids' mobile games. Bet yeah. US, I have to just say that because I'm yeah, you know, I know you. you Bet know. US is a big one too. That's a great one that All I right. should be on. Well, if my kids had seen it, they would have told me. So you know, like, they just don't play the same games. I guess that cater to uh, you know my kids play more like teenager kid games. You know they don't see as much in the way. But that's that that's that next question. It's like where do we sort of look to draw the line on how sports betting is going to become just is it just going to be we're seeing this like just this huge curve and rise obviously since the legalization where you know do we really want our young kids looking at these things i mean as adults you know you myself i mean i've, I've watched your show for years now and you. you're welcome and by the way congratulations um well deserved I love I love watching you guys as well. I mean, I, I do take in as much uh, soccer content as I can during the course of the week. But where does where does where do we sort of draw the line on, um, you know, when when does it become like more mainstream? You know, is it is it too much to be seeing this like on every type of streaming service and on you know mobile ads? Because you know I look at it from a different perspective. Pete Rose still is it in the Hall of Fame. Okay. This is how many years later that it's held against him. You know, we still talk about the Chicago Black Sox. You know, you mentioned Juventus. I love Juventus. Yes, they they got, you know, they got penalized this year for, you know, for even, you know, playing with their their uh their profit numbers, you know, and their and their salary valuations. You know, so I think I think you, you know, what you said earlier about um more reporting. I think when we do see more reporting, because, listen, we know that there aren't a lot of guys in for the, the press conference for the Red Bulls, okay? I don't know how it is with other teams because I don't follow other teams. I only follow the Red Bulls. But 
when you look at like Premier League, I know that there's a room full of reporters at every game. Is is what we're hearing or what what we're seeing from let's say you know for your your place or any other? Are we going to see an increase in, I guess, more transparency from the teams? Is that what we're sort of looking for in all this? So I think the pushback is always that the teams want to prevent transparency as much as possible, especially, um, you know, the, the league is doing it too with, with Messi. We will never get a, a really mm. real injury report on Messi. He's going to play no. all 700 games this year until the last minute. You know, we <laughs> saw what happened when he went over to China and mm -hmm. that's no, the battle, God. but that's, that's what good journalism is. Good journalism holds people to the fire. They, they, they hold your feet to the flames and say, it's not good enough to say Wednesday. I don't hear about his injury on Wednesday. My show airs tomorrow, 4 p.m. Right. What is an injury report on Wednesday going to do for me? What's an injury report on Friday when the official MLS <laughs> injury report comes out? What is that going to do for me? We, we can do better. And, and and part of that is is part of the struggle of of journalism's and uh, you know I kind of throw myself in the journalist pool a little liberally. That's not necessarily what I do. You know, my show is called the Designated Pundits, not the Designated Journalists, for a reason. Is is because there are much better people who who are doing that work certainly certainly than I. Um, but yeah, I mean that that that's that's the thing. That's the question, right? I mean. Um, we need accountability. And when money is on the line, you will get accountability one way or another, whether it's in a government entity that steps in and says, hey, too much money is going down on this for us to have these uh, you know, insiders. Because that's what it is right now. If you go to a press conference, you're an insider because that information is not public knowledge. And if it is, it's on such small outlets that only a select number of people have that information. So you know, when it, when it comes to people getting rotated out for rest, uh, injuries, players not making trips with the teams, all this stuff, that, that has to work itself out because what we want to do, it, it, it has to be accountable, it has to be truthful, and it has to be a level playing field for everyone involved. And, and right now, uh, I don't think that that is 100% is the case. All right. I mean, I, I, one of my questions, uh, since Bob and I share um, our press room duties for our, you know, for our respective uh, media outlets with him, with his, with designated pundits, with me, of course, with the uh, Red Bulls, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Red Bull um, News Network, and of course here with the discussion group. So I basically share, you know, both duties. And he's right. When you look in that room and you look amongst yourselves, there are guys who cover very outlets and they do a fine job. They do. Okay. But what I usually get hit with most of the time from most of from, from folks in the group from left field is say, okay, how come you're not giving us more information? Well, I'm only giving you the information that the team gives us and it's not much, you know, is it? Well, well, Fishkin gets more mm, doubt that <laughs> he's in the same room with us. And, um, he gets me, but you're right. One of the things that sports betting is going to, was supposed to do guys was to elevate the league where, now, all of a sudden, money is now coming to the game, okay? You see folks taking pictures with their parlays and everything else. They're in the action. They want the action. And in order to get that, they need more info. So lately, um, the one thing that I have to say about the press, you know, the, uh, about being in the press corps, is that the information is now coming a lot more freely, where before it was a lot more tight, you know, tight-lipped. You know about certain players, certain you know their um their um their status and everything else. Now it's a pretty much open kimono, and I think it's you know that's the good news. The bad news is that it is so saturated, Bob, that kids are seeing this and they're picking this up, and they want to also echo Mark's concern. At what point do you say, you know, do you? Talk about the elephant in the room. You're a teacher as well. How much of that do you see amongst kids, amongst teenagers? We'll start there. Well, the answer is none. Uh, and part of legalized sports betting and part of legalized gambling is that, you know, just like the drug trade, we're taking it out of the hands of the, you know, fine gentleman who had been running those establishments for a long time. And it's on the books. You, you cannot now, listen, I'm Italian. I, I know who ran the sports books 50 years ago. Okay. They're good for them personally. Um, sure. You ain't lying. I was you ain't lying. For an yeah. account, you need 
a, not a verified ID. You need a verified bank account. You have to be 18 to do that. Correct. So I think the fact that it's legal now, it, it takes away from the illegal gambling. It takes away from that game. It sanitizes it a bit. Um, you know, New Jersey just recently uh, um, legalized cannabis for, for users. And that is a similar situation Ooh. where you're taking something away from mm. illegal activity and bringing, you know, l l uh, sunlight is what the best disinfectant. I think it is what they say. And when you bring that to light, it's not stopping the criminal element from trying to get it back, though. <laughs> but it's, yeah, you're you're absolutely Fair right. Enough. That, I mean, that's another issue there. <laughs> another day. We don't, I, I think let's, it's, yeah, let's, let's move yeah. on. <laughs> I think it's I mean, significantly harder for kids to, to get into gambling. Uh, it's still out there. Hey, you know, maybe there, there's a father who lets his 17 year old son play on his cell phone and make a couple of wagers. Um, that's not for me to decide. Um, I do know that every time you want to place a bet and I've had it many times where I go multiple times in the day just to check my bets to see if there's like an injury or something I want to sub in or out. And if you'd log in like four or five times, it starts saying, do you need gambling help? Here's a hotline to that's also out there and they're funding uh, help for people who do have, have those problems. I love betting on games. I know what my limit is. Uh, I, I don't share that with other people. I talk in units, not in dollars. So if I say I'm up three units, that means however much my bets are, I won three of them. You don't need to know what what, what amount that is. Um, I'm a public school teacher, so you can guess what range uh, my, my, my general bets are in. But um, as far as, as, as kids' involvement, um, I think when you see it, you know it's out there. You you get a, a handle on it from when you're young. Maybe you'll even be more educated about it when you take when you turn the the legal gambling age um, to make responsible decisions about betting. Um, not everyone is losing their home on 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 an online sports book. Um, although those elements are out there, they were out there anyway. You know, you could go down to Atlantic City, out to, out to Vegas, any any weekend of the year, and see see that element there. But really, here, you know, it's about driving engagement with fans right this mm -hmm. weekend i could have turned the red bull game off when they got the red card actually i was there so i couldn't turn it off. i mean that, that'd be really hard yeah. if I, right? big, I, yeah. big remote <laughs> to, 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 to handle that but Damn. my bet for that game was was not on red bull to win it was on red bull to hold a clean sheet so i was invested up until the 90th minute making sure and if you make mm -hmm. bets like that if you uh you know, you're, you're going to stay up and watch the end of the game. There was another game, um, San Jose Quakes versus Colorado Rapids. I had Rapids to win. That was great. I had both teams to score. Earthquakes didn't score, but I kept on a bad game for a long time. I should have turned that game off a long time ago. It was a blowout. Uh, San Jose had no chance. But you're watching, and that's driving audiences. That is uh, raising the price of, you know, MLS uh, season pass. Apple loves that. It, it's not only, you know, you run a podcast. That's the engagement not that they're looking about for. people yeah. Yeah. turning it on. You get statistics for how long people watch, for how watch. long people stay engaged with that product. On mm -hmm. a Sunday, take a five buck bet on two different games, and now you have a reason to watch MLS on a Sunday afternoon when maybe you wouldn't if it's not your favorite team playing. So I, I really think that those things are, are really going to be driving engagement, and it, it's fun. It's fun to put a couple dollars down on a game. Uh, yes. People can make a living doing it. You can get paid a lot of money talking about it, but. I'm I'm not so concerned about the kids because I think we've taken kind of the the criminal element, the the unsavory things away from them. And there's nothing wrong about talking to your kids about odds on a game. Guess what? If you're not betting, you don't care about it. I don't think a kid who can't put five dollars on a game cares what the line is on a Red Bull <laughs> LAFC next week. <laughs> you know, so so I think it, it, it's about that. When when I post my YouTube videos. There's two options. Now, I am a public school teacher, so I have rules like I don't curse on my podcast. Nothing, you know, past PG-13. I let one, you know, <laughs> you know an, an, an S word you slip no once idea. in a while, but that's not yeah, a huge deal. You have deal. no idea how hard it is to keep Miggy and Mark uh, sanitized. <laughs> um, you know? uh, <laughs> okay. hey. I've I don't been good. any of my podcasts. So I've been good, man. Listen, I should I should get paid for drinking this stuff while I'm hey, on the show, hey, right? Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> it's our own product, over. man. <laughs> Mark's a company man. That's it. Company, company, man. See it. company man to the max. Company man to the max it's right coming, now. It's coming from the guy who's got this year's kid. Up. All right. But as see? they say, we all, uh, we, all, we all go for our... That's it. There you go. I got, <laughs> I got, I got my two team on, so... 
We got some cleanup to do, of course. Naturally, there is a game that happened in MSU Soccer Park, if that's what you want to call it. Um, it was a uh, five. Oh, are you kidding five, me? Th- that, th- was, th- th- that was the most entertaining th- thing you could have watched. On <laughs> this Sunday. team had a 3 nil lead. And then somehow four they nil. let this team four nil four lead. Nil. Then it became four one. Four. Then it became four two. Then it became four it three. <laughs> you know, to go to the but the, another Red the good news is the Red Bulls, what Red Bulls two, won. They won yeah. that game. Now, and of course, uh, you know, um, in the, penalty look at the line where it says fouls, thirty three fouls. Yeah, it was my insane. goodness. It was insane how nobody four. red carded off that field. I My annoyed. goodness! I, I just imagine you had imagine you had the game. better in that game. <laughs> How many goals were going to score yeah. in yeah. that game? <laughs> so, who had, so who had ten? Nobody. <laughs> you know, it, listen, it is next pro. I mean, it's not beyond the realm of you know possibility. But I you know, listen. My kids were jumping up and down after the first miss on the PKs, and they, <laughs> oh, he's going to miss the next one. I, he says, "I know we're going." I'm like, "Oh dear God!" I'm like, "Do you know that there's like well over a ninety percent chance of scoring on a PK?" I'm like, the goalie has maybe a 10% chance. Maybe. Of course, it helps if you put it on frame. The next game, of course, is Philadelphia Union 2 at Chester. Okay. 3 o'clock p.m. Why do they get the early games? Yeah, I I, I don't even want to. That that is one thing that I cannot stand about the MLS deal with Apple is our start times. And everything's Saturday. Can we have an afternoon game? Is it wrong of us to want an afternoon game in the spring? Well, Seriously, look at it this please. way. Yeah. Like, do we want – I mean, yeah, the first two home games we have, first of all, it's only our third out of eight games. We're back on the road again next week. We've we've had, like, three home games. Two – yeah, we, we brought scuba gear to get home, all right? It was cold. Not, like, freezing cold, but it was cold with the wind. Saturday. How many times? We, how many times we have to tell you guys? It doesn't get warm around here until I don't know. Yeah, June. June. Yeah. <laughs> today we live in the North. You should know this North by now. Okay. Yeah, but it, 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 it was cold. really warm today. Yesterday. Well, you'd be shocked if a Red Bull two guys. This is John Amaral, the the voice of reason. Be shocked if Red Bull two guys get a start on Saturday. Maybe a bench guy to be slim pickings for the positions needed. He's right, of course. Um. When it comes to this team, what did I say earlier in the show? Every single team is top heavy, right? So um, our bench is going to be the definitive reason why, whether they go for, you know, go, uh, go further or not. Of course, our last game of the week, of course, happens to be the team that, well, they fed it themselves with a championship last year. Remember them? This was Gotham FC, New Jersey, New York, that is. And they played against the Kansas City Current. Miss Gonzalez with a goal in the 51st minute that beat Chawinga in the 17th, and that's and then ended right there, 1-1 um, at Red Bull Arena. The one thing that concerns me, guys, is I'm looking at the standings here. Kansas City Current is sitting mighty pretty at first place. However, the ladies are in seventh. So I'll ask this question before we move things on. Is Gotham in trouble? No, um, I wouldn't say that. It's it's very, very early days. Obviously, you know, the lack of goal scoring is definitely concerning. Only two goals in those first three games. But, you know, obviously, this team has championship pedigree. Obviously, they sent a bunch of USWNT, prominent USWNT players, you know, in the offseason. It sucks that Mitch Purse is out for the season, unfortunately. But I think his team has more I than that was gonna to hurt. at least continue to compete near the top of the league. I'm not. I'm not worried yet, because like you said, it's three games. I mean, it's still early in their season. They obviously did make acquisitions in the off season to better themselves, because they said, you know, they they don't want to just be one and done. But after three three games, I'm not. I'm not even thinking about panic button with the with the ladies team. You know, what's I say, Bob? Star laden teams take a while to gel because they're all getting used to each other. But once they do, look out. Um, so yeah. we'll see if that you know that pattern um, fits the mold for Gotham um, next week. Now, by the way, their next game, in case you're wondering, um, they play our uh, their old nemesis, Washington Spirit. Seems that every time when they face this squad down at DC, okay, over in Audi Field. 
Things get a little chippy, but did, should I say that those two squads don't like each other in the old <laughs> Metro mode? So now mm. we focus, of course, to our most dangerous segment before we all say goodbye for the evening, and that is predictions. Yours truly, <laughs> thanks to the nil-nil draw, got knocked right back down the last place. I'm looking at, at up at you, Lonre, sitting pretty at first. Yeah, no jinx, <laughs> okay. right, man. No jinx, right, man. I'm looking at you. Hey, what you talking sitting about? Sitting behind you is Carlos. Right behind Carlos is Mark. Right behind Mark is Miggy. And that's me sitting down there in the basement, <clears throat> being locked in by the rest of y'all. So, Bob, of course is representing all of the guests that we've had in our show. And unfortunately, Lon Ray, you got company. You're t- <laughs> so Bob is right now going, hi. We're t- <laughs> Based on all the points, they're basically tied. So, Bob, oh. you have the honor of going first. LAFC versus New York Red Bulls kick off at 1030 on Saturday. What are we feeling? LAFC is not the LAFC of years past they're plus one goal differential on the season that's not great i think red bulls are angry they have every right to be angry um they will be without the problem on the back line there and i, th- I think oh. they're gonna go in hungry red bull i, I, we I saw- mean that was that was political <laughs> the, yeah, the problem that, that, we're calling him now i mean we've insane. heard everything from the idiot the, file, the the red card, the black card in the back line, and now we have the problem. This that game's was a, good. Well, he was the problem last game, right? We, we would have won easily in Chicago. That was Ouch. a problem. Against Chicago, yeah. Yeah, okay. No, we should destroy Chicago. I think with 11 men, we play better on uh, – we play better away, right? You're pressing. You're taking chances. This team is going to be dynamic. 2-1 Red Bull. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Okay, Mark, you're next. I I'm going to echo our guest at two one. I think that we will prevail. By the way, results count. Keep that in mind. Listen, I went I went zero zero two games ago. I picked the wrong game. Two zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're above me. Because okay. I thought I thought we were going. I got be, nothing. I we were looking at nil nil. I got nothing. I said right. three I one had, against Chicago. I so am what? one. I am and, one and in four right, right now. I'm <laughs> out. I have I have confidence in my boys. By the way, before I forget, I realized my mic was off before. You mentioned that Bradley was doing the thread. I spoke to Bradley on Saturday uh, at the tailgate. If he can't go, he's going to text me, and I will pinch it. Okay. Um, for Saturday night. Let right. us know. We've got plenty take, of time. Take, taking the jacket off and coming out of the bullpen. Okay, so Bob says 2-1. Mark says 2-1. Lon Ray, what say you? 2-1. Two 2-1 one. Two one Red Bulls. Let's get it. got this 2-1. <laughs> I'm going to be the one lone that's the idiot one. that's not going to be the – It's not going to uh, go. Well, I'm going to be the – I mean, hey, I need, I, I need points. I need points. I'm going to go bold on this one. 3-1. Ooh. New York. Oh. And – and the reason for that is there's the anger factor, okay? This team seems to play better when it's emotional. Don't get – I don't know why that is, but it is. It's true, especially after, A, a loss, or, B, a game they should have won. Now, when we interviewed players um, after the game, they weren't too exactly satisfied that things ended nil-nil, especially when they had their chances. So they know they're going up against a very good club in LAFC, even though they're not as in the same strength that they were when they were chasing the title. That said, they want to keep that reputation saying, hey, we're not here near the top of the table by accident. We're going to show everyone that we're a very good side. That's something that should bring a smile to everyone's face, even to this guy over here who promise to be a little bit more <laughs> more critical uh, in that area. But I like what I see as far as their attitude, and it has a lot to do with their coach. Speaking of Bob, we know the difference between Schwartz and, of course, Struber. Struber, well, is uh. exit stage left. But let's talk about Schwartz for a second. I know I you and I haven't spoken in this area. 
How do you feel about him as the head coach of the team? Is he the real deal, or he's a little bit too need a little bit more seasoning for you to make that determination? Yeah, I think he's the real deal, and, and he he seems emotional now, not in the way that his responses are over emotional. He's very diplomatic right. behind right. the microphone, but he 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 brings something to the team. I think I think that. The team made a lot of great moves this offseason. We were missing a number 10. We were missing a veteran presence. We got it all wrapped up in one, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I think that Schuber, for all his faults, was, was given a really bad hand last year. He was not given a team remotely close to what we have this season, and he didn't have a plan B. Um, he didn't have a striker willing to put the ball in the net. No plan A. This team has three new attacking options they didn't have last year. I think what the plan is this year, last year I think we were a little too conservative. We had a lot of clean sheets. This was one of the best defenses in Major League Soccer last year. Tied maybe for, didn't tied, like yeah, tied for you know, tied for second with three other teams yeah. in the league last year. We yeah. didn't give up That's a lot really of goals. Good. That's really good. But at the same time, we lost a lot of games because we didn't score a lot of goals. <laughs> that was score, frustrating to the score. fan base. But if we could sacrifice five goals this year, mm-hmm by playing a little more pressure and score 10 more goals this year because of that that pressure now we're cooking with fire that team was was very very good and they were a few points away they were a few players away look at the roster they put on the field in Cincinnati they almost got a win with that roster that was gross that's unacceptable they had they almost won in the playoffs with an unacceptable major league soccer roster that's what they did last year so now we have three new attacking weapons and I'm counting Van Zier and Lewis Morgan as new attacking weapons because they, they yeah. were not. Um, we're cooking with fire. We're cooking with fire. Sandro knows it. He's saying all the right things. He is, you know, endearing himself to the fan base. The players, when we did that media day at the beginning of the year, the mm-hmm. players were beaming about this team. I, in a way I've never seen before, and it made me more enthusiastic the about vibe this was off the bring. chain as far as the positivity is concerned well, bob is, I, can, I can, you know, I can concur Macula. with bob i mean when was the last time we've seen we've felt that okay these guys are they were they were waiting for the season to start right there because they knew they had guys okay that have the horses it was more of a okay we we we, we, knew, we know what you saw last year but wait till you see this year we're going to be a show I promise it. And then you had Forsberg going from room to room to room, shaking hands with everybody like he was the mayor. <laughs> and he <laughs> wasn't Bola actually Rena. the player the other players were the most optimistic <laughs> about. I asked many questions about this team, about the changes, mm-hmm. and I was corrected time and time again when I was talking about how good the defense was. Can you run the defense back? Every player there said, well, we have Noah now. We have Noah. He's going to be that guy. And that kind of awakened me to something. I kind of wrote him off as like a bench piece, but no. Right. He, yeah. He's going to be that guy too. You have Geng, uh, Gengar. Um, all these players who who they like each other. They, they're they getting along better. I, I, you know, I don't know if he's a coach or a therapist sometimes, but he's getting the results on the field. I was the one. I was the lone person who was optimistic on this team. I put them to finish top three in the Eastern Conference at the beginning of this season. Mm. I came and said it to you. I came and said it on the Fishkin show. I, I, I said it everywhere, and everyone was saying, no, that's too high. No, that's too high. It's not too high. <laughs> this was the best defense in Major League Soccer last year, uh, what their offense had to put up with, and they were taking so much pressure. It, it just it was obvious to me that this was going to be a huge change this year. I mean, what did I say, fellas? I there was no reason why they shouldn't, you know, they shouldn't finish anywhere within the top four, right? And the reason why I've said that is because of that defense. They didn't change very much. They added to it. Ooh. So think about that for a second. You know, many of the games they played was proven that, except for maybe, uh, except for maybe Columbus. Okay, we knew what was going to happen with Columbus. But every game that they played, they were right in it right to the end because they said, oh, okay, we're just going to keep you no. from scoring. Columbus, <laughs> and- Columbus is our only loss so far this season. I that's mean, it. And if you look at that's it, it. The Orlando own goal was kind of a freak at the end of the game thing. And even Saturday, obviously, different story, I think, if Reyes doesn't get carted off. We had a lot of chances, two posts. I mean, it's it's definitely a <laughs> can we get, yeah. There's Lisa again. <laughs> I know. My my son wore his Gengar sweatshirt to the to the game Saturday. And I said, I don't know if he's gonna get in. And then after, of course, the red card, I said, yeah, you might as well just go sit somewhere else because they're, you know, he ain't getting in. 
But you look at Dylan Nealis, and I use him as the perfect example of what a difference a different coach, different coaching style makes for a team. Sandro has gotten Dylan to play so much better. He's got to be top five for most improved players in MLS this year. He went from mistake prone to yeah, a maestro. And, yeah, I mean, he think is, about that he is, for a second. Yeah, he is just okay. he's played so much better. He went from and, mistake and, prone and you, to a maestro. Yeah. Where where now that if he starts in you know if he starts in the back line one with his brother, we're not worried about him so much no. anymore. No. Think about no, that, we, Bob. We're, we're not worried about, about him so. Remember, no, we, we used to go, "Oh God, him." Uh, you know, no, now, no, but, now it's yeah. now Duncan and Reyes. You know, they're they're the ones we go, oh, geez, you know. I mean, yeah. well, that's something we have to, well, the, the problem needs to be taken before he even thinks about starting to need to be taken to the side and go, we can't have that happen again. No. Okay? No. Can't have that. No. That, 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 that ridiculous, you know, style of where no, you are all it's gas, no this. break. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to learn how to think, you know, and stuff like that. Bob, before we disappear, tell the whole world where we can find you, man. You can find us on YouTube. Just search for The Designated Pundits on whatever podcast app is your favorite. Search The Designated Pundits. You can find me at I80 underscore sports. Uh, no, that's not my Twitter handle. Now it's at Bob V Soccer. <laughs> at Bob V Soccer. On <laughs> Twitter. Like, Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Scare me there for a minute. What yeah. minute? No, no, to all those I don't like the name. I mean, I don't know why you trash the name, though. Yeah. That, 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 I was really getting used to it, but we, now we you were it. we were missing brand recognition. People knew we were a sports podcast, didn't know that we were a major league soccer podcast. I think the designated <laughs> pundits kind of brings a little uh, MLS flavor, almost like an inside joke. Like if you hear that, you're like, oh yeah, that's that's major league soccer, and it's yeah. helped us. It's helped us. We've mm -hmm. gotten a lot of uh, you know unexplained traffic where nothing else has changed except the name. So so I think that you know it was the right call. We still have uh, ID Sports Media is our you know, parent company. We do have a couple other podcasts on there. So we're leaving that around for a little while, but we do need that brand recognition too. So I can't, I can't tell you how many Thank stickers you. that have been put up and I'm not going to take any responsibility for them. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new batch. Look, I, I, I have <laughs> new two sizes, two sizes. Uh oh, oh yeah. I got, oh, yeah, I got them. Yeah, I got I got them. Like, they're they're I on my they're, yeah. they're on my podcast wall. Just I'll over have to find you guys next game and, and give you so much. But thank <laughs> you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to come on here tonight and, to, and talk sock with you. Uh, congratulations, you congratulations, you congratulations, all, congratulations, all, congratulations, number one, one, number one, you're a member. Number two, you always have a home and not just yourself or the entire crew. And number three, don't be a stranger because you know we're going to tap you on the shoulder again when it, this when this season is out. So, and that ends. Episode one zero four. You know, it, we do this every week, of course, for the group, and one of the reasons for because we love doing it. So, as we always say, if you have any, um, you know, any feedback, of course, the show positive, negative, what have you, feel free to drop us a line at rbdg the podcast at gmail.com next week two of the original three carlos is back we haven't seen him in a while nope. we won't, that, that, yeah that's what i say who <laughs> he still Miguel. works here <laughs> i have I mean, no idea i have no idea i mean we, i've been holding it down for this guy i mean i, I kind of yelled at him he's the he's the co-producer of this blasted show um so <laughs> so that's that's why he definitely needs to make a you know the, uh, a, a presence for lon ray bad must Mark Coates, and of course, the one and only Bob Venta Megilia. This is Gary Revin. Thank you guys so, so much for joining us this, you know, this hour. We appreciate your, you know, definitely appreciate your, um, your support for the show. Once again, um, our, our YouTube channel, Spotify.com and Goals.tv, where we're having some issues with Goals.tv as far as loading the episodes. I do not know why. I was talking to the technical advisor. They're working us, you know, they're helping us with that. We'll get all the shows up in there entirely. As you know, when this show ends, up they go for your listening and watching pleasure. So thanks a lot. We'll see you guys next week. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Until then, thank you very much. Good night and goodbye for now. <laughs>